The events began during a school trip to Seoul to Namsan Tower. A simple teenager, Yeon Woo, who was not particularly popular, was traveling alongside his best friend, Kim Jubin. Yeon Woo is in love with his classmate So Young and has every intention of finally talking to her. During the settlement, Yeon Woo is offered to sneak in some soju to hang out with him later. Han Sheng Kyu and Park Min deceived the teenager, exposed him, but did not invite him to the party. John Woo was angry with the boys, but they avoided him on the cable car. It was there that the nightmare began. Several teenagers were locked in a cable car cabin when the apocalypse began. They managed to get out of there and move to the other side below, but there were viruses in the building. They had to get out. Young Woo repeatedly helped So Young, who fell and broke her knees. His most desperate act was to distract the monster from the girls when they were one step away from death. But when John Woo returned, the rest of his classmates were already running away without him. The last person he saw was So Yeon through the window, who looked at her rescuer and simply ran away. It turned out that the teenagers had also left Kim Jubin. The friends decided to get out of the room, but unfortunately, as a result of a fight, Kim Jubin dies. Yeon Woo made a big fire and choked on the smoke. His last memory was that his arm was infected with a virus and fire trucks came to the building. The teenager wakes up in a shelter where he has been taken care of. There, Yong Wu met Han Xiong Yu, Park Min, and Isuri. Meanwhile, other classmates took refuge in a cafe where their grandmother sheltered them. There, they met Ji Soon and Kim Minja, So Young's best friend. The teenagers also met a bus driver and a soldier, Shi Han Hyun, and together they decided to look for a hiding place at the Seoul train station. Unfortunately for them, the bus driver turned out to be a traitor, so he framed So Young and the others and then left alone without the rest of the company. The only other girls on the bus with him were Hong Mi, Ji Soon, Kim Minju, and Kang Hana. The group was divided. With their joint efforts, having survived more than one betrayal, the soldier and the teenagers were almost there. But they are betrayed by another man, whom they rescued at the gas station and drive away in a car with gas from the company. Unfortunately, the car caught fire, there was an explosion, and everyone lost consciousness. This is what saved the company, because the military came to rescue them and took them to a shelter. All the classmates met there. Yan Wu did not accept the warmth of his betrayers, especially Seo Young. He was also told that Kim Jubin had betrayed him and suggested that he flee Namsan. The teenager in the shelter felt that his hand was infected, but he did not turn into a monster. It turned out that Yang Wu was immune, just like Li Tain, and the man told him something and gave him advice but this information was not enough. Lee Tae-in also helped Park Min out by giving him a pill from a virus that turned out to be a cure for cancer. Ji Han Hyun also met a bus driver there and asked him where the girls who were traveling with him were. It turned out that they got off the bus and ran away somewhere. There was a massive monster infestation in the shelter. All the classmates and the soldier were on the same floor together, so they had to get out. The other soldiers wanted to burn them all, but miraculously they all survived and ended up in another abandoned building where they were taken by homeless people. Ji Han Hyun and Kang Ji Hoon go in search of the girls, as Kang Hana has contacted them and given them the coordinates of their location. A homeless man, Choi, was left in charge and later was beaten by his other colleagues and locked in a room with the teenagers. One of the men is infected with the virus, so the teenagers decide to escape from the room, but before that, they have to kill the monster. Before he died, the monster told Yeon Woo that he was infected and would soon die, and others heard it, so Yeon Woo decided to escape on his own. But the military came to the building and wanted to kill the teenagers. Everyone starts to run away, but Seo Young decides not to leave Yeon Woo, so she stays with him. Because of this, they and the homeless are taken prisoner. They manage to get out of there. The company met a soldier who led them to the building where the girls, Kang Ji Hoon, and the soldier were likely hiding. Yan Wu and Soyeon went inside. There they met Kim Minja, but she was infected, so they killed her. After that, they met a military man and Kang Jihoon and decided to kill the main exoskeleton monster together. Unfortunately, Ji Han Hyun did not survive and was killed by the monster, but the military blew up the room with the monster. The teenagers were able to get out of there and find Kang Khan. The girls said that Lee Hong Mi died because of the monster and that she was the only one left. Kang Ji Hoon and Lee Hong Mi were close, but the teenager hurt her because of family problems and really wanted to save her and apologize, but he couldn't. The company and the soldier who is in love with Seo Young go to Namsan Tower because other classmates were there. 
Kang Hana said that her classmates invited them, but she started to deceive the company. When they were alone with Soyeon, she said that there was a secret chat without them, and those classmates said they didn't want to see anyone but Soyeon. Hana runs away on her own because Soyeon did not agree to the betrayal. But Kang Jehoon took Lee Hong Mi's phone, who was also in that chat, and they found the classmates' hiding place. The company was forced and intimidated into a shopping center where the traders closed down. There they learn about the photo that Kang Hana took. Lee Hong Mi was there. After that, the soldier tells them that they can go home because everyone is being evacuated. But Yeonwoo was not so happy. The guy came to the window. He was all in his thoughts. Meanwhile, the girls were discussing what had happened to Kim Minju. Seo Young was crying because she was still painfully experiencing the loss of her friend. John Woo was eavesdropping on their conversation. So Yeon said that everything seemed too unrealistic and cruel to her. The teenager suddenly remembered his friend Kim Jubin. Yeon Woo also could not get over the loss and is unlikely to ever do so. Jubin was always so weird and strange. But that's why they were friends, because they accepted all the cockroaches in each other. Yeon Woo imagined his friend standing next to him, wishing so much that Jubin was here now, rejoicing that this nightmare was over. Suddenly, someone called Yonva. It was Kiju who stood there apologizing to the boy. The teenager did not understand at first. Then Kiju explained that he thought Yonwu was angry because they wouldn't open the door for them. After that, the guy looked out the window and apologized again, as if for all his friends. He explained that they had barely found this safe place themselves, so they were afraid of being noticed. Yonwu interrupted Kiju and told him not to worry because the teenager had survived on the streets on his own, so he was no stranger to it. The guy admired Yonwu and said that he would never have been able to survive on his own. The girls overheard their conversation from behind. The lipped classmate perked up her ears, as if she didn't like it. Then she interrupted the guys and said that was enough. They didn't understand what was happening. So a classmate told Kid that they needed to talk and he had to follow her. The guy said goodbye to John Wu and promised to talk to him again. A lip-syncing classmate caught this phrase as well. Meanwhile, the girls asked Soyeon if she had been in that chat, but it was clear from her reaction that she had not. A classmate started screaming and said that something terrible and disgusting had happened and that it was all Hannah's fault. The girl said she took a photo of Hanmi falling. Soyeon was shocked and returned to find Hannah, but my classmate was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, something strange was happening in the dark room below. Someone could be heard crying on the stairs. It was Kang Hana, crying and saying how much she hated her classmate. She was shaking, curled up in a ball. She could see the displeased face of her classmate, who was condemning Hannah. The girl cried bitterly and did not understand why they all did this to her. It made her fiercely angry. And then, Hannah remembered Hanmi. She was her close friend, so she was also upset. Hannah did not mean Hanma any harm. Meanwhile, the events moved to the kitchen. At the bottom of the table were cans of oil. Kang Jehoon was rummaging around and looking for something. He raked up everything he saw in front of him and wondered what else he could take with him. A classmate in a purple suit approached him and asked what he was doing here. She added that there was not much variety in the food. Kang Jehoon turned to her and looked down at her, threatening her not to annoy him. But the girl just calmly drank some water and said that she could not be intimidated that easily. And then she just turned around and left. But Kang Jehoon stopped her. The guy asked where the soju was. He was sure that the girl must have known about it. My classmate stopped. She was interested in Kang Jehoon's question. Then she opened her briefcase and started looking for something. Then, the girl took out a bottle of alcohol and asked if that was what Kang Jehoon meant. The guy was shocked that his classmate was carrying alcohol in her briefcase. It turned out that there was more than one bottle. Kang Jehoon asked why she was carrying them in her bag. She said that these were all the bottles of soju she found in Park Min's briefcase. And then, the girl asked if these were all the bottles they used for the raffle. Kang Jehoon confirmed this information. Then, the girl became animated and asked the boy if he drank them to stay awake, and then asked him to teach her how to do the same. But Kang Jehoon asked her not to disturb him. But his classmates stood her ground and said that they were her bottles. So Kang Jehoon had to tell her who taught him how to do it. The teenager said briefly that it was an acquaintance, but the girl wanted to know more. Then, Kang Jehoon remembered his friend Jihan Hyun, who had passed away. The teenager said again that it was an acquaintance. He did not want to talk about it because the wound was too fresh. Meanwhile, the soldier who came with them ordered everyone to get ready because they had to leave before sunset. Jeonwoo suddenly felt something strange. 
He was again visited by that strange feeling in his hand that spread throughout his body. Soyon, meanwhile, was alarmed and screaming. Of course, the soldier noticed this and asked what happened. His face showed that he cared about Soyon and was happy to help. The girl came back and said that one was missing. She was talking about Kang Hana and added that it seemed that her classmate had gone somewhere. This was not the kind of help the military wanted to provide, so he was shocked. He started a search engine and told everyone to find it because they were about to leave. So Young noticed Yan Wu standing sadly by the window. The guy said that it didn't look like he was burning alive when So Young approached him. The girl did not understand what the teenager was talking about. Yan Wu didn't know how to put the words together without sounding strange coming from him. Meanwhile, Hannah was still sitting on the stairs. She got to her feet. The girl seemed to see something in front of her that frightened her. Yonwu said Soyon that it seemed that the monster Gale was still alive. It turned out that it was he who was standing in front of Kang Han. The girl was in a stupor because she was one step away from death. She screamed loudly, which was all Hannah could do at that moment. Meanwhile, the events moved to the shopping center where the company was located. The soldier and Kang Ji-hoon loudly recoiled and hid behind the wall. They looked around. Her husband said she wasn't there. It turned out they were looking for Kang Hana. A classmate said she was there. So Yun was also worried about her friend, even though she was doing bad things. The soldier said they had no choice but to go without her. Then Yon Wu came to them and also confirmed that his search was in vain because he had not found Hana. The soldier then said that everyone should wait for him, and he would go to the basement to look for him. After that, he turned to everyone and told them not to worry too much, and then called out So Yun's name. The girl was confused and did not know how to react and what to say in such cases. Then a loud-mouthed classmate yelled at everyone and told them to act quickly to get out of here. But someone interrupted her. She didn't have time to finish her humiliation about Hannah. It was Kang Jihoon and he asked if his classmate was sure. He came back and asked if Kang Hannah's picture on the phone was definitely of Han Mi. But her classmate asked her if she had ever cheated on them. Jihoon asked her to answer normally. The soldier interrupted them and said that there was enough talk. They had to go. Then he called Jonah. The guy was even glad to be noticed, but lately he'd been getting too much attention from the military. The events moved to the basement. Yan Wu and the man hid behind the door and carefully examined the room to make sure there were no monsters. Then the guy noticed the eggs and told the soldier to be careful. Yan Wu asked if they had been here since the beginning of the virus. After that, the soldier asked him if he was afraid. Yanwa was puzzled by this question, so he asked the man again. The soldier came back and said that the boy agreed to go with him without argument. Yanwu said it wasn't like that. The man was just helping them, so the boy was grateful to him. A strange smile appeared on the soldier's face, indicating a lack of understanding. Then he laughed and said that Yanwu was funny, and then advised him to watch out. Otherwise, he would be finished. The man seemed to want to know something from the boy, so he asked why Yanwu wasn't afraid of her eggs, to which the boy replied that he was just dealing with them. And then, the teenager's tone became quieter and sadder, and he said that he just wanted to save his friend. The soldier laughed again and said that although the probability was not high, he thought that their friend had died long ago. The man did not even return to John Wu, saying that he wanted to be honest with him. He added that only the strongest survived, and the boy had to understand that. But John Wu did not fully understand the meaning of the man's words. So he asked him again, to which the soldier turned and said Soyon's name. Then the teenager got nervous and asked what she was doing here. That strange smile reappeared on the man's face, and he looked the boy straight in the eye. Then he asked if John Wu liked her, to which the guy reacted with a strong shock. The teenager looked down and said that it was not even close. Then the soldier asked why the boy blushed. John Wu shouted that it was just hot. He suddenly remembered her, how beautiful she had been at the beginning of the tour. So young was John Wu's first love. Now he wasn't sure if he wanted to date her again. The teenager realized that he had been deceiving himself, that he did not like So Yun, and then asked the soldier not to ask such strange questions anymore. A lot has changed now. The man said he understood the boy. Then he turned away and looked down, as if he was still worried about something. The soldier looked at Yanva again and asked him again if he would answer his question. Yan Wu looked into the man's eyes and realized that his behavior was strange and at times dangerous. The soldier's eyes narrowed, as if he were angry, and the man said that So Young liked Yon Wu. The guy didn't know how to react, but he knew he had to speak carefully. Suddenly, someone else approached them. It was Kang Jehoon who said he thought they were looking for Hannah, not talking. The soldier asked him why he had come. The guy looked down at his forehead and said that they were waiting too long. 
and then he added that he had found another staircase upstairs. Meanwhile, the events moved upstairs, where everyone else was. The girls looked at what was happening outside. They noticed that the Khan River was full of these eggs, which had grown to incredible sizes. Her classmate was more outraged than anyone else and asked when they managed to get so big. Soyeon thought she didn't understand anything. She wondered why the authorities suddenly stopped taking people out. After all, they could have evacuated everyone and burned everything. Or did they just want to leave everything as it was and start acting? Meanwhile, another classmate asked what Hannah was like in middle school. The lipped girl began a story about what high school was like for her. There were only boys in her class back then, and they stole Hannah's personal diary. When she found out about it, she was furious. In fact, she can be understood because it is her personal diary. They had no right. My classmate said that there were strange and horrible things written in that diary. Hannah wanted someone to push her down the stairs or to drink poisoned milk. The girls were shocked by this information. A loud-mouthed classmate said that because of this, Kang Hana became friends with Homie, perhaps trying to live a normal life. Then, she asked if Hannah was weird and commented that she was trying to make a victim out of herself. But suddenly their conversation was interrupted by screams. It was Kiju, who was out of breath and running to the girls and looking around. It turned out that the boy had seen a monster and was running away from it. They all hid behind the wall and panicked because they didn't know what to do next. Then a girl in a purple suit told everyone to wait and reached into her briefcase. She then pulled out a Molotov cocktail. Soyeon knew what it was and said it was supposed to help because the monsters were afraid of fire. The girls started to say that they didn't have a lighter, but another classmate was already lighting the cocktail. Soyeon did not know everything about her classmates. A few minutes later, the monster was already on fire. My other classmates screamed and complained about the terrible smell. Other monsters came running to these sounds. The company heard this and realized that they had to leave immediately. The monsters ran after them. A classmate took out her phone while running. It seems she wanted to call for help. Meanwhile, the boys continued to search for Kang Han. They went down to the floor below. It was called 2F and for some reason was marked with a special color. The guys entered the room through a glass door. The soldier said there was nothing there. Everything really looked clean. Yan Wu said to be careful, and Kang Ji Hoon looked out from behind him to see what he was doing. Then they went down the stairs even further. At that moment, John Wu felt a sharp pain in his arm. The guy decided to look up, but there was nothing there. The room was surprisingly clean, and that was what scared me. Then he looked at what was happening on the street. It seems that the teenager has noticed something. Behind the glass, he saw a large number of monsters. Kang Ji Hoon also noticed them and was aggressive. When they entered another door, they were met by monsters. One of them immediately spotted his victims and headed for them. Meanwhile, Kang Hana held onto the door with her hands and yelled for them to leave. There were monsters outside the door and the girl was trying to escape. Kang Hana shouted to the monsters and thought they understood her. The girl was shaking with fear. The monster even seemed to answer her. Hannah tried to remind Gail of herself, but the zombie didn't want to listen to her and slipped through the crack in the door. Her paws were very close to Kang Hana's. The girl quickly took her hands away and screamed. She stood in a stupor and just screamed for Gail to leave her. The monster tried to get out of the door because it was pinned when Hannah let go. When the mucus that was used as skin receded from the body, the skeleton of the monster was visible. It looked very scary. The boys heard Hannah and ran to her. Kung Jihoon did not understand how the monster got here because they were not supposed to be here. Gail noticed the boys right away and found new victims. Kang Ji-hoon immediately threw a Molotov cocktail at her before she could attack first. Gale growled. The soldier readied his weapon and aimed at the monster. But something strange was happening to the monster. Its skin began to melt. The guys were shocked by what they saw. The monster simply took its head away from the fire, sacrificing part of its slime skin. It did not burn any further, although other monsters were afraid of fire, but Gale was not. The guys opened their mouths wide and could not believe what they were seeing. The monster simply put out all the fire with himself. Gale was smarter than the other monsters. After that, she just ran away from them. The soldier pointed his weapon and said that she had to be destroyed. He ordered the other guys to run away immediately. Then the monster stopped and turned to them. She changed her route and decided to attack the boys. The teenagers were scared and screamed. The monster screamed even louder. Yon Wu covered his ears with his hands. He felt sick for some reason. The men fled to a safe place. They stood there and recoiled, not realizing what was happening. When others discussed that the monsters had learned to regenerate, 
Yonwu was in his own thoughts. Suddenly he realized something, something shocking. And then his arm got sore again. The phrase about the regeneration of monsters puzzled him. Yan Wu also noticed something strange when the military pointed their weapons at him. He was shocked because it seems that monsters have become smarter. Meanwhile, John Wu looked around and realized that they were not alone. Behind the glass, Kang Hana was shaking. She stood and said how glad she was that they had come for her. Kang Jehun approached the glass and asked if Hannah had asked them for help and asked if the girl had a conscience. Hannah started to say that it was all because of Seo Young, because she was close to Park Min and asked her not to help him. She swore that she really wanted to help. It looks like she was lying. After all, if Seo Young was close to Park Min, she would have been in the chat room as well. Then Kang Ji Hoon asked what happened to Hunmi. He asked why Hannah had taken her picture and then suggested that she could have done the same to Seo Young. Kang Hana began to stutter. She was nervous and didn't know what to say. Kang Jihoon noticed that the soldier was pointing a rifle at her. He asked the man what was going on. The soldier ordered the girl to stay where she was. He threatened to shoot Hannah if she came out. Kang Jihoon was outraged and shouted at the soldier because his actions were strange. Meanwhile, Yon Wu noticed something. He began to look closely and examine everything. Kang Jihoon and the soldier continued to argue. The guy asked why he was aiming if they had come to save her. The soldier asked what Kang Jihoon was doing now. He said directly that they had to save Hannah before she came into contact with the monster. The soldier said they did not know whether the girl was infected or not, otherwise they risked losing everyone. He added that the safety of the majority came first. Kang Jihoon did not like these words. Hannah started screaming and proving that she was not infected. The girl suddenly began to tell the truth. She said that what happened to Hanmi was her fault. Hannah said she was sorry for what she had done and that she had also sent the photo to get help. Meanwhile, John Wu was looking at the girl, as if he could see right through her, and he noticed something in her hands. He agreed with the military that they did not know for sure whether the girl was infected. Then John Wu said that Hannah had touched the monster. He thought that he should have accepted it. Hannah stood in a stupor and did not understand anything. She tried to shout and challenge John Wu's words but was interrupted. The boy said he saw the monster touch her. He didn't actually see it, but he had to protect everyone somehow. He added that when Hannah tried to close the door, the monster touched her. The boy realized that this was the only way to save the others. John Wu said they could not take the girl with them. Hannah started screaming and crying for them to believe her. Kang Ji Hoon yelled at the guy and asked him when he had seen her. Then the soldier also asked Yon Wu if he was sure of his words. The man said that if it was true, they had to get rid of her. Yon Wu looked down and said he was completely sure of it. He turned around and said that they had to leave her here and leave because it was dangerous to stay here. Suddenly he heard a loud sound behind him. Yon Wu turned around and saw a horrific scene. He could not believe his eyes and what had happened. Khan Hanna was lying on the floor with a lot of broken glass near her. Kang Ji Hoon ran at the soldier, called him a scumbag and asked him to stop. The man asked if the boy was serious. A conflict was brewing between them. Kang Ji Hoon looked at him with great aggression. The soldier said that the teenager spoke directly. He explained that it was better to die from a bullet than to be infected. Yan Wu kept looking at Kang Hana in shock. His eyes widened. He was scared, just like the time a homeless man was shot in front of him. The soldier pushed Kang Ji Hoon and ordered him not to stand still because he had to leave. Suddenly, the man heard something strange. There was a monster in the doorway running at them. The man started to run away. Kang Hana was still lying there, dripping with fluid. Suddenly, her eyes opened and she wished for John Wu's death. Meanwhile, the boys were climbing up the stairs. They were laughing loudly when the man noticed something. The room where the others were supposed to wait was completely on fire. The man started shouting and calling everyone to come out. The soldier moved forward, giving the others the opportunity to be alone. There was a lot of tension between the guys. Kang Jihoon called out to Yan Wu. He grabbed the boy by his t-shirt and called him a bastard, saying that no matter how strong he was, Yan Wu was acting like a monster. Kang Ji Hoon asked if he was even a human being, because Yan Wu did the same thing to Park Min. Maybe he liked killing others. Yan Wu simply pulled away rudely and ordered him to let go. The teenager explained that Kang Hana was infected and he could not keep silent about it. Kang Ji Hoon started screaming and asked him not to lie because Yan Wu couldn't see anything. He couldn't decide who was infected and who wasn't. The teenager called Yan Wu a murderer. Then, a military man interrupted the conversation and said that it was not the time for talks. Others were running behind the company. They shouted and rejoiced that they had finally found the boys. 
Soyeon noticed something strange going on between the boys. Yeonwoo told Kang Jihoon that it didn't solve anything, that he looked like a monster. The teenager looked at him with surprise, even fear. Yeonwoo said calmly that Kang Jihoon already knew everything, and he asked how long the boy would pretend that he didn't understand. Meanwhile, Kang Hana was still in the basement. She whined that she was hurt. Suddenly, the girl noticed something. In front of her was Gail, who was yelling at Hannah, as if she didn't feel the virus in her. Suddenly, Hannah felt something strange in herself. Her hand trembled and eventually her whole body. Gail threw her tentacles at Khan Hannah. The monster opened its huge mouth and roared. Kang Hannah's face was covered with blisters, as if Gail was devouring the girl. Hannah told the monster to eat everyone else. Meanwhile, tensions between Yong Wu and Kang Ji Hoon were growing. Kang Ji Hoon asked him what he knew, and his eyes showed fear. The teenager was afraid of what he knew. At that moment, others ran up to them. John Wu said that everyone here was in great danger. And then he added that Kang Ji Hoon could have pretended to know nothing, and then suggested that we end it there. But the guy's patience ran out and he exploded. Kang Ji Hoon grabbed Yon Wu's shirt again and came at him with accusations that he couldn't see that Hannah was infected. Kiju intervened in the fight and began to break it up. The other girls asked where Kang Hana was. So Yon began to worry and guess something and asked where her classmate was. John Wu looked at the girl with a cold and glassy gaze. So Yon began to get even more nervous. Her questions seemed rhetorical because it was already clear what had happened. The soldier began to say that he was sorry. He returned to Soyeon and said that Hannah was infected and they had no other choice. Kang Jehoon exploded and asked him to tell the truth. The teenager turned to everyone and said that Hannah was not infected. They just took her life, and it was all because of Yanva. Kiju asked the boy to explain everything. The soldier shouted and ordered Kang Jehoon to close up because everything was clear. The man said that Kang Hana was in close contact with one of the animals, and John Wu saw it. The others looked at the boys with suspicion. Then the soldier asked which of them wanted to walk next to the time bomb. Kiju turned to the man and asked if it was true. He could not believe what had happened and could not say the word. John Wu was silent and looked at the floor. The teenager understood how it sounded, but the lives of the majority were the priority. Kiju's eyes widened, and he looked at the teenager with fear. Then, a loud-mouthed classmate ended the conversation and said that they had to run away and added that she did not miss Hannah. Kang ji Hoon asked that even if the girl was just expressing her opinion, did Hannah deserve such a fate? Then her classmate attacked her with accusations that she was already infected, so she would have died sooner or later. Kang ji Hoon continued to argue that this was not the case, when suddenly, Yeon Wu felt something. He turned back to see what made him feel pain and was horrified. A monster came out of the room behind them. He was not yet visible, but John Wu could still feel it. He ordered the others to run away. The teenager could even hear the monster growling. John Wu ordered everyone to flee once again, but this time louder. But everyone was in a stupor and did not understand why they had to run away. So the teenager shouted in an unnatural voice that they should run away immediately. At the time, they listened to him, but Kang ji Hoon began to resent why they had to listen to him. But the teenager didn't have time to finish because he saw something. The monster Gale, who was very close to the company, came out of the stairs. Everyone started running away as fast as they could and didn't look back. The newcomers were lagging behind because it was their first experience. The soldier shouted that they needed fire. A classmate with dark hair was far behind the others. She stopped to rest, but there was a monster behind her. Gale screamed at the girl. Death was inevitable. This was noticed by another classmate in a tracksuit. The poor woman was shaking and started crying because she realized what was about to happen. She noticed that next to the monster's face was another, completely fresh one. It resembled Hannah's face. Then her classmate screamed even louder because she saw her future. Suddenly, a friend ran to her rescue with a cocktail. She threw it at the monster. Gail screamed. Her skin began to melt. Unfortunately, her classmate was already infected because the monster had already eaten her. Then, Park Choa wanted to light another cocktail to save her friend, but was stopped by Yan Wu. He dragged the girl away, saying that there was no point in setting this monster on fire because it was putting out the fire. Even though Gale was melting down and busy with her sacrifice, it was still dangerous. The teenagers ran on. John Wu turned back to see what was happening. He seemed to feel the monster's emotions and compassion. The first to run was a soldier and Soyeon. The man complained that this madness had started again. There was a big pile of monsters in front of them, and the man said there was no point in saving anyone. 
A monster suddenly appeared near Soyon, as if out of nowhere, but the soldier was able to stand up for her and opened fire on the monster. The man shouted that they could not be stopped with weapons, they needed fire. Kiju saw what happened to the others and started looking around for a fire. He noticed an object that was on fire. At that moment, another monster attacked him. Kiju grabbed the burning object and managed to fight off the monster. The boy acted confidently and bravely. Then he heard his girlfriend screaming. The lipped girl, Sion Young, was also attacked by a monster. She screamed loudly and stood in a stupor. Kiju bravely stood up for her, pushed her away, and threw the burning object at the monster. It worked, and the monster fell to the ground. Kiju did not even have time to realize what was happening. The teenager was acting on automatic. He turned to Seon Young and asked if she was okay. And then, when I helped her up, she even thanked me for saving her. Kiju shouted that they had to leave because it was extremely dangerous to stay. And at that moment, the monster attacked him with its tentacles. Sung Yan quickly started running away when she saw this. Monster Gale and Hannah pounced on poor Kiju and laughed at his expression. It was the first time the monster had ever spoken. They wished Kij death and ate his face. The teenager screamed in pain, but there was no saving him. Meanwhile, Kang Jehoon asked Park Choa how many Molotov cocktails she had left. The teenager suggested blowing everyone up by tying up their weapons and throwing them at the monsters at once. John Woo overheard the conversation and shouted out that he had an idea. Kang Jehoon came back and asked what the idea was. The teenager suggested luring them all to one place together, especially that monster, Gale. His eyes were blank and cold as he said that after that, they would blow up all the monsters. Meanwhile, the monsters were growing like cockroaches. Everyone was hiding behind the soldier who was fighting back with his weapon. But it didn't help much. It only provoked the monsters even more. Suddenly, Soyon noticed something. There were bags of garbage near the tank. The girl brought one package, and Shengyan asked what it was for. Soyon screamed for them to give her a lighter quickly. Others were shocked by the girl's desperation. A few minutes later, there was a massive fire. Everything was on fire. The company was hiding behind glass doors. Sion Young yelled and called Soyon crazy for setting fire to the garbage. And now the company is stuck outside the door for a long time. But the soldier denied this and called Soyon a good man. He turned to the girl and said that she had made sure that the monsters could not enter the room. Then, Gail came to the other burning monsters and growled as if she was telling them something. At the bottom of her body was Kiju's head. Sung Yan and the others noticed this, and she asked what they should do now. Monster Gale and the others roared at the door to the room. She was not afraid of fire. The company was shocked that the monster started talking to them. Kang Hana said in a strange voice that they could not hide from her. The monster put its tentacles through the door, and Hana said that for some reason the company was not happy to see her. This monster was incredibly clever and let its tentacles out from the top to get inside. The soldier pointed his weapon while others screamed in panic. That's what happened. And the monster leaked through the crack from above. Soyeon looked around and she was getting good at coming up with some plans. She saw that there was a kitchen behind them. Suddenly, Soyeon gathered her courage and ordered the monster to leave. She took a lighted stick and stood boldly in front of the door. Soyeon began to threaten and said that there was a kitchen with cylinders behind them. After such an explosion, no monster would have survived. Soyeon looked confident. There was no fear in her eyes, and she invited the monster to take a chance if he was not afraid. Kang Hana said that So Young was very annoying. She repeated it several times. The case did not move forward. The monster just stood there and thought about what to do next. Suddenly, someone called him from above. It was John Wu coming down the stairs. The boy was loudly recoiling because he was afraid and nervous, waiting for the monster's reaction. But it was not long in coming. So Yan Wu quickly ran back, and Gale caught up with him. It was more attractive prey than company. The guy quickly ran away and looked back with his side vision. The monster ran after him and called his name. Kang Hana was very angry with the teenager and wished for the same fate. Soyeon looked at this with shock because they had escaped and could breathe. Through the glass, she saw a monster catching up with Yonwa. Suddenly, she remembered something. When they were on the cable car, John Wu did exactly the same thing. The boy lured the monster to save Soyeon and the others. Even after everything that happened, John Wu saved her again. Meanwhile, the teenager ran away as fast as he could. The monster was literally on his heels and catching up with him. Gale roared. She wanted to grab Yanva and take revenge so badly. The teenager lured her into the room. The monster ran after him without hesitation. It is not clear who exactly controlled the mind of this animal. John Wu turned a corner. The teenager was panting loudly. His strength was leaving his body. 
he could not run so long and fast. The monster noticed this and gave him even more strength and adrenaline. Hannah started shouting and calling Jonah to her, but the teenager did not give up and kept running, even though it was very difficult. He turned back, laughing loudly to see how far behind the monster he was. Before that, they had agreed with Kang Jehun and Park Choa about the plan. The guy told Yan Wu that it was just a suicide, but the teenager did not listen to him and said that they would put a bomb here. Yan Wu looked around the room carefully to understand its design. The guy said that if he lured the monster to the other side of the door, they could attack him from behind. And so, Yan Wu was a few meters away from the goal, running on his last legs. Others were supposed to wait for him there. Kang Jihoon saw the teenager and shouted at him to run faster. The monster was already catching up behind him, and the guy said they were ready. Gale growled. She was extremely close to the guy. Kang Jihoon shouted as if he was genuinely worried about Yan Wu and asked him to run faster. John Wu was trying so hard he could barely hold on. And then the teenager overstarts the fire, and Gale manages to release his tentacles into it. Yan Wu lands on the floor, falling and recoiling loudly. The monster growled because it could not cross the fire. At that moment, she heard someone's voice behind her and turned around. It was Park Choa who brought the fire. Gale was trapped. The girl told the monster that it was revenge for her classmates. Gail growled because she realized her helplessness. Kang Jihoon threw a trap of fire at it and the monster flew away several meters. The monster roared and burned, and their plan worked. The boys gasped loudly and looked at the burning monster. They decided to move on because it looked like they were done with Gail. The boys ran to Park Choa. She asked Yan Wu if he was done with the monster, and he said that it was possible because no one could know for sure. The girl looked at him with respect and said that he was now the former John Wu. And then she added that he was an incredible genius and praised the guy. Kang Jihoon heard this. Yon Wu thanked us and said that he had been through a lot when he got off the cable car, so he was no stranger to it. Kang Jihoon was dissatisfied with these words and returned to them. He asked how Yon Wu managed to survive the fire, and the boy started talking. But he didn't finish his sentence because he felt something. Suddenly, water began to flow from the ceiling because the fire detectors were triggered. The entire room was flooded with water. This meant only one thing. The fire went out, so Gale was able to survive and John Wu even heard her. The monster got to his feet. Then he growled loudly. The teenagers screamed. Their cool plan failed, even though they had high hopes for it. Then, suddenly, Soyon appeared out of nowhere, holding a stick of fire. She threw him into the Gaelic Sea, thus saving the others. It was as if Soyon herself did not believe in what she was doing and was scared. Although she was holding up well, the monster fell to the floor. Everyone else standing behind Soyeon was shocked by what had happened. The monster growled and then started talking to the teenagers. Soyeon noticed John Wu looking at her out of the corner of her eye, and she thanked him for saving her. John Wu looked at the girl with shock and admiration. Park Choa reached into her briefcase, saying that the monster was too stubborn and needed to be killed. The monster denied everything and asked him to stop. The teenagers were shocked that he was talking. It was disgusting. Kong Hana said that they all betrayed her. And then she added that she couldn't move and asked not to be disturbed. Kong Jehun said that the monster's legs were regenerating and the monster was not going to die. But the monster began to deny his words. It all looked very ugly and strange. Monsters had never spoken to them before. Kong Jehun turned his attention to the monster's head, which spoke. The other heads were silent. Suddenly, he began to notice and understand something. It was as if the monster was trying to pronounce Hanmi's name. Kang Hana recalled how she and Hanmi ran away from the monsters. The girl became very ill and could not run any further. Kang Hana grabbed her friend's hand. But Hanmi said she couldn't do it anymore. It was too hard for her. She was also very scared, and her strength was leaving her. Kang Jehun told the others that the voice sounded like Hana. Everyone else also looked at her, and her hairstyle was similar to her classmates. So Young said that the monster also called her name, and Park Choa asked what it meant. The girl told her that there was no time to think. They had to come up with something and burn this monster. The monster was listening to this and saw the fire in Soyeon's hands, which was dangerous for her. The monster's leg could move a little and began to recover. John Woo thought about what the others were saying. Suddenly, the puzzles in his head began to come together, and he quickly tried to come up with a plan to escape. Then the monster spoke to them again. It was very bad and incomprehensible. Kang Hana mentioned So Young's name. The girl was confused by this and stalled. Suddenly, the monster attacked her, saying that Hana had trusted So Young. 
Yon Wu could not let this happen. The monster was about to get the girl. There were only seconds. A teenager has never been so worried even about himself. He stretched out his hand to protect Soyun. Yon Wu was deceiving himself, because such actions are only done for people you love. Meanwhile, a soldier approached them. He was watching everything and noticed that Soyun was attacked by a monster. The girl was shaking and covered herself with her hands, closing her eyes in anticipation of death. But nothing happened. Soyun opened her eyes to see what had happened. The monster just screamed at her, opening its mouth. And in front of the monster was John Wu's hand, trembling. The monster stalled, attracted by the teenager's hand. John Wu closed his eyes in fear, and in his head he called himself crazy. But everything happened too quickly. His actions were faster than his thoughts. A strange sensation gripped the teenager's arm and body. He felt as if the nerves and blood vessels of the monster and his were connected, and he was scared. But Yon Wu remembered what Li Tain had once told him. The teenager felt the force and ordered Soyun to run away quickly. The girl was in a stupor and did not understand what was happening. But Soyon didn't listen. She looked around for something useful. She noticed a mop on fire. Meanwhile, the monster was trembling just like John Wu. Kang Hana told the teenager that she felt he was as infected as she was. John Wu was afraid and trembling. He did not know what these experiments could lead to. Suddenly, Soyon attacked the monster with a mop and words of apology. Everything went up in flames and smoke. John Wu sat down and held his hand while the monster burned. He was in pain. It looks like the teenager got a burn on his hands. The monster was burning, but Kang Hana kept talking and called everyone stupid. She said that Yon Wu was also infected, and the monster repeated this over and over again until she finally died. Her last words to Yon Wu were that it was inevitable. Yon Wu looked at the others. He understood what was about to happen because this situation had already happened. Others looked at him with condemnation and incomprehension. They were understandable because no one wanted to die. Yon Wu knew the feeling. He looked at the burning monster, afraid to look up at the others. Kang Hana remembered Han Mi before she died. She had her back to her, and she will take the secret of her friend's death with her to the next world. Although she was a monster on the outside, inside Hana loved Han Mi and was very sorry. Kang Jihoon ordered everyone to leave. Suddenly he stopped because he saw something in front of him. It was a soldier who pointed his weapon at them, or rather to Yanwa. The teenager realized what was going on and began to panic. There was a loud sound. The soldier did not even move. It seemed he wanted to get rid of the teenager. John Wu was lying on the floor. No one had time to react. Kong Jihoon and Park Choa could not believe what had happened. The teenager's mouth was bleeding. He wanted to scream, but he couldn't. A soldier stood in front of him, holding an assault rifle over the teenager's body. Kong Jihoon ran at the man, screaming. The events moved indoors, and there was a fire in the Namsun Tower. Isuri came to the window. She asked the others if they had heard the sound as well. Kang Min asked if she was talking about a gunshot. Isuri said that they should have been concerned as well, because the fire was in Namsan and the sound was coming from there as well. The girl was outraged by what was happening there. Meanwhile, Kang Jihoon knocked the soldier down with his body and his shot flew past. The teenager was screaming and asking to stop shooting. The soldier could only threaten with his weapon. Meanwhile, Yon Wu was still lying on the floor and did not move. Soyeon approached him. She called out to Yonwa. Her voice was full of worry. The girl started shouting and asked the teenager to wake up or give a sign that he heard her. But Yon Wu was lying there without any signs of life, and So Young continued to beg him. The teenager seemed to be unconscious because he felt something very strange in his hands. They were all trembling, and John Wu felt some kind of power in them. Meanwhile, the military man and Kang Jihoon continued to fight. The man defeated the teenager, but there was no reason to be proud. Kang Jihoon looked up and was startled his heart beating faster. The soldier also pointed a gun at him, saying that he did not like him from the very beginning. After that, the man took aim and said that Kang Jihoon was also close to Yan Wu, so he decided that he had the right to shoot him as well. Suddenly, everyone was paying attention to something else. Kang Jihoon also looked to the side and could not believe his eyes. Jan Wu just stood up. The teenager raised his strangely trembling hand. After that, he directed it at a military man. Soyeon was shocked by what she saw. John Wu said that was enough. The soldier also did not understand what was happening. John Wu said he was going to die and he could have killed him. Then, at that moment, the sounds of monsters roaring were heard and the soldier turned back. A pack of monsters was running behind. The soldier began to shoot back because the monsters attacked him. Seo Young approached Yon Wu and wanted to touch him to ask what happened. 
but she noticed that his face was strange and covered with spots. The Soyans stopped for their own safety. After that, Yanwu simply collapsed. The girl screamed again, and it looked like the teenager had lost consciousness. Wu just lay there and showed no signs of life. Soyeon screamed and almost cried, begging the teenager not to lose consciousness. Wu heard her, but he couldn't help but think about how he ended up here. Then the guy started to remember something. He remembered school and his friend Kim Jubin. At that moment, Wu remembered that all this happened because he came to Seoul. Meanwhile, the events moved indoors. There were other soldiers and my grandmother waiting for the company, which should have returned long ago. They took the old woman out of the room. The soldier reported to the others that they had burned all the monsters in the area. He was asked if there were any survivors. The man said that there was supposed to be a group of high school students somewhere, and they were in Namsan. He added that part of their group went there and they had to pick them up and bring them back to the base. Another soldier entered the room. There was a homeless man sitting there and the man told him that it was dangerous to stay here alone. The man looked at him silently. The soldier understood everything without words. He went out and told the others that they were coming back. The homeless man also left the room and went further down the hall. He had difficulty walking because he was wounded. In front of him was a clean basement with a bunch of pipes and strange rooms. Choi said he was already at his home, so he had nowhere else to go. He will be lucky if he survives. The man was walking and thinking that it would be nice to drink soju. Suddenly, he saw something and stopped. A man with a monster was lying on the floor. Choi came closer. It was Jihan Hyun and the monster he killed by sacrificing himself. The homeless man recognized his friend. There was sadness in his eyes because he knew what had happened, but it was harder to see it with his own eyes. Choi buried the body. After that, he stood there and shook his head. The man looked at the grave and thought that no one would have buried these people if it hadn't been for him. And then the homeless man remembered something else. He looked at the room where the teenagers were looking for Hanmi. The man went down to the same room and the door creaked. He carefully opened them and looked inside. Lee Hong Mi was lying on the floor and she also had to be buried. Meanwhile, others were running up the stairs. Kang Ji Hoon was carrying Yan Wu on his shoulders and So Yan was running behind him. The teenager asked the girl if anyone was chasing them. Song Yan said that Kang Ji Hoon was originally supposed to tell her what happened to Yan Wu, but the teenager ordered her to keep quiet and watch him. Soyeon also said that now it was better to just leave the place and leave all the talk for later. Kang Jihoon told the bastard to stay there. If they follow him, they'll all die. But the company still did not understand what had happened. No one did. Kang Jihoon said that he was sure that all this happened because of Yan Wu. There was silence. Even though the teenager was angry with the boy, he was still saving his friend. Seo Young asked what Kang Jihoon's words meant. Suddenly, someone from behind asked me to wait. It was Park Choa, and she stopped and said that she didn't care what was going on between them all. And then she added that she heard what that monster said. Then she said that everyone else had heard it too. Lee Young Woo was infected. The girl said it would be easier to just leave him there. Meanwhile, the events moved back to the place where the graves were. Choi was digging another hole. Hanmi was lying next to me. The homeless man complained about how hard the work was. His whole body ached, and he was not young. But the man had a goal to bury all the bodies. They deserved to rest in peace. Choi kept digging. He wanted to help these poor souls somehow. The man believed that they were getting peace then. Suddenly, Choi heard some sounds. He couldn't believe his eyes and was afraid to return. But someone was calling for help. Nevertheless, Choi gathered the courage to return. He could not believe what he was seeing. Meanwhile, the teenagers argued about what to do with Lee Yonwu. Kang Jihoon was outraged by Park Joa's words. The girl said it was pointless to bring him with her. Park Choa explained that she had cooperated with him because she wanted to save her friends. But now the game was up. She ordered them to leave Yonwa. Someone suddenly approached the teenagers, but they did not notice them. Someone said that he could not leave him here because Jonwu had saved them all from death. Suddenly everyone turned toward the sound and was shocked. But there were Asuri and Kang Min. The girl told everyone to follow them if they wanted to be saved. So Yon was sincerely happy to see Asuri. The girl was as calm as ever and did not show any emotion, saying that it was enough to waste time. Meanwhile, the teenagers had already gone down the stairs. Sung Yeon was indignant that she did not know where they had all been taken. The teenagers were facing monsters. Kang Min said he wanted to burn them and asked for help. The guy started a fire and Kang Jihoon asked if it was a fire extinguisher. Kang Min turned to everyone and ordered them to flee quickly. He asked everyone to go inside immediately. Soyeon only had time to look at what was happening. Kang Ming closed the door with something special. 
apparently to keep the monsters out. Isuri breathed a sigh of relief and took off her cloak. The other teenagers laughed loudly and were glad that it was finally over. Kang Jihoon was still holding Yanwu. Isuri noticed this and was surprised. The girl saw a large wound on the teenager's body. Everyone was sitting in the kitchen. Someone said that Yanwu was bleeding. Kang Jihoon was silent at first. And then he looked up. It was Isuri. And Kang Jihoon asked how they all survived. To which the girl said that she was just like them. And then she added that it didn't matter how they all survived. They needed fire. The girl said that there was a big fire in Namsan. And then she asked why they went there in the first place. Kang Jihoon didn't like the tone with which Isuri spoke. Kang Min interrupted this argument and asked where the others were and if they could not save Hon Mi after all. Kang Jihoon put his head down and remained silent. He started to speak, interrupting himself, and you could hear how hard it was for him. He paused again to collect his thoughts. Soyeon said that when they found her, it was too late, and added that Hana and Yihan Hyun were not with them either. Kang Min was sympathetic and did not know what to say. Everyone was silent, and the tension was palpable. But the greatest sadness came from Kang Jihoon, who knew what Hon Mi meant to him. Suddenly, Song Yeon told everyone to stop. She was selfish, sitting on the phone and saying she didn't want to remember them. She explained that she was already feeling bad. And then she added that they had to get out before it was too late because Seoul was about to be closed. She was interrupted by Asuri, who asked if Seon Young was that worried about her life. As usual, she didn't even look at the other person. And then she said that they theoretically had time to get to the exit. She added that since Seon Young had a phone, she had to find the place on a map. They saw that Dong Seol Station was located on the banks of the Han River, and they had to cross the river anyway. So to get there, the teenagers had to go through a lot of problems. Isuri added that it would be difficult for them to be Yonwu. Sung Yeon just laughed and said she didn't understand. The girl said that there would be soldiers there, so they didn't need Yonwu. Isuri agreed with Sung Yeon's words, and then added that if she could handle the fire extinguisher herself, she could leave. And then she said that it was dangerous for them. Park Choa interrupted the conversation and asked why no one wanted to leave him if he was infected. So Young exhaled and listened to the girl talk about the danger to Yan Wu. And then she started talking. So Yeon suggested that everyone prepare for this moment when John Wu could theoretically pose a threat to everyone. Everyone looked into the room where John Wu was sleeping. Meanwhile, Kang Min, Kang Jihoon, and Isuri were looking at their laptops and searching for something. Kang Min said that he followed the news from time to time. And then I opened an article with photos of monsters. Kang Jihoon said how disgusting these monsters were. Kang Ming said that the infection occurred without visible symptoms, but the monsters could merge together. Simply put, this meant that the infection rate was decreasing. Isuri added that more of the monsters they encountered were fused into one. This implied that when cells divided inside the body, the body tried to survive and fight the cells. Kang Jihoon then asked if this meant that there were no problems. Isuri said that these were all just theories and Kang Min asked her about the monster that merged with the man she had seen. The girl turned around and seemed to be heading for the exit, and the guys kept asking her about it. The girl thought that one of the options was the evolution of monsters, and it seemed that the military near the Han River did not even suspect this, so what kind of salvation could we talk about? Meanwhile, So Young sat next to Yan Wu and watched. Isuri came up and asked how things were going, but it was obvious. So Young sighed sadly and said that Yan Wu never woke up. Isuri said it was not even possible to cure him. They were in danger with Yonwu. And then she added that if he ended up in a military camp, he would be killed and buried somewhere. She said she was sure that all those infected were killed. And then Isuri left, saying that all we had to do was believe in a miracle and talk to him when he woke up. Soyeon was shocked by this speech and tried to digest everything in her head. She looked at Yonva. The phrase that the teenager was infected kept running through my head and everyone believed it. But for some reason, they were not afraid. So Young remembered Yan Wu's face before he fainted. Even then, the girl was very scared when she saw the teenager. So Young was tired and thought that it all sounded unreal. She wanted so much for it to be just a dream. The girl did not want to believe it. She wondered if she was regretting something. Meanwhile, Kang Min and Kang Ji Hoon were thinking of an escape plan. If they can't cross the bridge, the road will get a lot longer. And then Kang Min added that we should stock up on oil before we go. Sung Yan was thinking about something and looking around. Then she saw Park Choa and asked him to wait for her. Sung Yan suggested that she leave separately from everyone else. But Park Choa refused because it was too dangerous. To which Sion Young replied that there would be soldiers there. Park Choa said that if they were infected, she would be killed anyway. 
Sung Yan was angry that everything was so difficult because of Yan Wu, and then asked that if they took the infected person out of Seoul, then the whole world would be in danger. Park Choa was silent and thinking, and then she asked what Seung Yan was hinting at. Meanwhile, So Young was still sitting next to Yan Wu. She was just checking her phone to kill time. Suddenly, Yan Wu woke up. So Young jumped out of her seat. The teenager was scared and did not know where he was, so he was breathing loudly. So Young tried to calm him down. She said they were coming home. John Wu tried to get up. The teenager was shivering and completely exhausted. So Young looked on in silence and could not believe how he had survived all that. Isuri was standing in the doorway. She was watching what was happening. So Young came closer to Yan Wu. His body was shaking. He could barely stand. She leaned over to the teenager to see if he was okay. So Young said she thought he was dead and was glad he wasn't. John Wu started to cry. The teenager asked her not to leave him and offered to walk home together, saying that he was sorry for what had happened. So Young said that everything was fine and he just needed to rest a bit. Others entered the teenager's room, and they were all shocked, to say the least. Kang Min openly expressed his shock and said that it was incredible that Yan Wu had woken up. But the teenager remained silent and tried to realize everything. Kang Ji Hoon asked how Yan Wu was feeling, as he had been unconscious for a long time. He added that the bastard had shot him, so John Wu probably couldn't get up now. John Wu simply nodded. And then he said that Kang Ji Hoon must have brought it from Nam San and thanked him for saving him. Kang Ji Hoon didn't know how to react, because he and Yan Wu had been almost enemies before. And then, the teenager just turned around and asked me to stop talking nonsense. Then the others entered the room. Park Choa said that now they had to have a serious talk. Yon Wu sat by the wall and waited for the attack. Park Choa told the teenager to answer them honestly. And then she asked if Yon Wu was infected. Sung Yon exploded and told him not to even dare to deceive them or deny the obvious. Isuri intervened in the conversation and pushed Park Choa away, telling Yon Wu in a calm voice not to be afraid of them but to tell the truth. Isuri asked him to be honest with them because they were in the same boat, and John Wu started to speak. But the girl interrupted him and said she had only one question. She paused so that her words did not sound strange. And then she asked if Yon Wu was immune to the infection. Meanwhile, the events moved to the marketplace. There was nothing on the shelves. Everything had been taken apart. Kang Ming was indignant that there was nothing useful and suggested looking elsewhere. Kang Ji Hoon said that he was also empty. Yon Wu followed the crowd. They were going to check another warehouse. Suddenly the teenager felt something. He told the others to be careful. There really was a monster behind the door. He would growl at the others and hide in the warehouse. The guys were scared. A few minutes later, everything was on fire. The teenagers took everything they could carry from the warehouse. But they did not burn the monster completely because there was no time. Kang Ji Hoon called out to So Young, and she seemed a little scared. He asked why the girl was frozen and ordered her to walk faster. So Yon looked at Yonwa and Isuri. Isuri asked the boy what else he knew about the characteristics of monster cells. So Yon recalled the conversation when Yon Wu talked about immunity. The teenager then realized that he had to tell the truth, otherwise he would be left behind or killed. Isuri then asked if John Wu had some kind of substance in his body or if it was really immunity. She remembered the conversation she had with the guy in the shelter when he said he had met someone who was immune to infection. She reminded the teenager about her and added that she immediately guessed everything when she saw the wounded Yonva. Because just because a person had immunity did not mean that he was not infected. The mutation was just not so obvious. Yonwu said that he did not understand exactly what it was and was not sure about it. But he added that maybe it was just as Isuri said. Yonwu said he didn't know if they would believe him or not, but he was immune to infection and couldn't have become such a monster. The teenager finally admitted it. The events moved back to reality. Sung Young asked Kang Ji Hoon if he believed in all of this, but he said he didn't know. The girl was very indignant and asked if anyone else had heard of immunity to infection, saying that it was all a hoax to survive. She called on everyone to look at Yonva and said that the teenager was planning something against them. So Yon listened to her words in silence and looked at the teenager. Meanwhile, the company was ready to go. They took supplies with them and walked carefully. Kang Min said to take the oil and run forward, when suddenly they noticed something. In front of them was a gang of robbers who were beating a man. The company hid behind a car and watched everything. Several guys beat the man and threatened him. Kang Min asked if they were supposed to help the man. The events moved back in time when the teenagers learned about Yan Wu's immunity. Kang Min stood up and said that they all looked very funny now. 
After all, if such people really existed, it was salvation for them. Meanwhile, Yonwu was in the other room. He was standing in the bathtub by the mirror. The guy lifted his t-shirt to look at his wound. It was delayed, and his body regenerated quickly. He did not understand why he was so anxious, even though there was no danger. Yonwu felt as if everything was unreal and his cells were simply collapsing. He wondered what would happen to him if he continued to exist like this. Yonwu realized that he had to find Li Tain to find out what was happening to him. Isuri entered the room. She asked Yanva to show her early to know the teenager's condition. The guy looked at her silently. Meanwhile, the table was discussing Han Song Yu. Kang Min said he thought he was using them as bait when he arrived from Namsan. He added that there was something unclean here. After all, when everyone is in a panic, there is a riot going on around them and no one notices anything. Kang Min remembered Han Song Yu. Meanwhile, Soyeon was walking down the hall. She heard a conversation outside the door and John Wu's voice. She came closer. Isuri listened to the teenager. Yeonwoo talked about Li Tain and said that the man knew more and he had come all the way to Namsan to meet him. The teenager added that it was difficult to understand what was happening to him. Isuri listened intently to Jonwa in silence. Suddenly she said he was not alone. So Yon was listening to their conversation and did not dare to come in. Isuri said that without them, Yonwu would not be able to cope. And then she said that in truth, they needed him too. Soyeon felt something strange inside. These two were close. Isuri told Jonwu that she had promised him that they would return together. The guy was pleased to hear this. Isuri looked directly into his eyes as he looked into hers. The girl told Jonwu not to worry about anything. 